Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial! It's Tui time here, and I'm here to tell you all about the .mtl file. What is the .mtl file? What does it have to do with the .obj file? What do you mean meshes have different materials, and the meshes in the .obj file are separated by material? Well, I've got good news for you, because I'm going to be answering all these questions in this episode. Also, I went ahead and made a really cool cheat sheet that has a bunch of the different attributes that an MTL file can have. I didn't put every single one on there, but it'll help you get through at least, you know, seeing a couple of them. I'll leave that link in the description to go where you can find that. If you like this episode, hit thumbs up. If you want more of this content, feel free to subscribe. And then if you want the application, the really cool PBR application that I show you in this tutorial, go on over to my Patreon page, donate like five bucks. Boom, I'm gonna give you the source code and the application. You can go look at all of it, go look at how you know, you can render realistic looking things, pretty cool stuff. So let's jump into how to use and what the hell are .mtl files. All right, so in our last episode, we talked all about submeshes and how submeshes contain different materials per submesh. As you can see from this chest, we have the metal kind of outlying parts right here, this nice little metal mesh. And then on the inside, we have the wood mesh. And each one of those has a different material assigned to it. And so what we do is we use a .mtl file to define what each individual material is. Uh, if I were to upload a .obj and a .mtl file with some textures, I need a way to group all that together so that my engine can just kind of parse these files and put all of it together to make you know, this chest. Or if I go over to the helmet scene, make this helmet. It needs to know what different values to apply. And that's what the .mtl file does. It kind of clumps all this information together and your engine just kind of reads it and parses it and makes something beautiful like so. So let's jump into the actual files and show you exactly what the hell I'm talking about. A long time ago in some tutorial far, far away, I talked all about the .obj file, but I never talked about the material properties that it has. As you can see, this is just a chest.obj file. And in this chest.obj file, we have vertices. And if we scroll down, we have our normals and our texture coordinates. And if we go down, we have these Fs that define our indexed values. But what I never talked about is this little diddly up here. This MTL lib chest.mtl defines what material library to use. And uh, it's saying use chest.mtl. So what is just chest.mtl? Well, while you're parsing this .obj file, or in our case with Swift or the metal shading language stuff, uh, we don't have to, it kind of does it for us, but when you're parsing, if you had to parse this obj file yourself, you would parse this metal lib chest.mtl, which would give you this chest mtl. You just kind of refer to it. You see, you just keep it in the same place and you have a material library that goes alongside your obj file. Also, if I were to go and look up use MTL, down here in these indices, we have use material, chest, ma metal material. And if I go over to the, so use MTL, use material, chest, metal material, go over to the chest.mtl, look at this, chest, metal material. So it's basically a key value pair on what material to apply at these indices. These F represents the mesh indices. So this is basically the sub mesh for the metal. And then if we go find the next used material, oh, there's the wood material. And we're defining the indices for our wood material or our wood mesh. And here is the used material chest wood material. And what you do is you, while you're parsing this OBJ file, you figure out what material applies to those indices. So if I go back over to the chest MTL file, we can go into exactly what all of these different values mean. And I'm not going to go over every single one because there's a, you know, there's more that we haven't really used in our engine and they're not relevant here. And honestly, I don't know too much about them, but these are pretty basic ones to find in a .mtl file. So at the very top of this file, we have comments. So you can use just like in your OBJ file, you can use the hash symbol or the pound sign, the number symbol to define a comment. So anyone, any one of these little hashes they you know it's not real code don't, don't parse it it's not it doesn't mean anything um, but then we have this new material so chest metal material is our new material it has an ambient value uh, looks like of rgb so it's split out by spaces we have our red green blue value and it looks like it's just point five eight and then we have our diffuse value and you see these are comments you can add little comments on here i'm um, just kind of telling you what they are 
but this is going to be the diffuse value this is going to be the specular this is going to be the emissive this is the shininess exponent ns and i is going to be the optical density so basically if you can see through it, it has like refraction or reflection uh, you can you can look through that object what is the density of this object and then underneath we have these different values so these different values like map kd is our base color map so when we're loading into our game object or game engine our mesh it'll know what color what texture to apply to itself instead of having to go set texture to dot party pirate parrot we can now just load them dynamically so here we have chess base color and if i open this up a little bit you can see that we have our chest metal base color right here and then down here is our chest wood base color so it's saying go find in our textures the path textures go find chest metal base color and you'll see we have a chest metal base color so it's going to go look for that metal base color and it's going to load it as the texture for this mesh for the sub mesh and then underneath so that's 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 one material underneath we also have this new material chest wood material and so this is going to define the wood values and you know i didn't put these comments but these are all pretty much the same exact thing ambient diffuse specular emissive shininess uh, optical density illum which represents the illumination model which is basically what kind of values do i use do i use ambient and reflection do i use uh does this have optical density and just diffuse but as you can see we have this secondary wood material that defines the wood so that's basically all the mtl file is it's just defining each individual sub mesh and what's cool is when you're working in something like blender you can group by material so when you export it as an obj you can group whatever you made in blender that 3d object as materials you can group them as materials so when you load them into your engine it'll only load those specific sub meshes based on the material grouping you did in blender pretty cool stuff hope you like this episode very simple straightforward stuff uh if you like this episode you know do the whole like subscribe thing uh patreon discord there's the one of those two i'll leave the links in the description have a good day <laughs>